Welcome back, finally, to Outside the Arena. I'm Griffin Senek, joined alongside my new co-host, Devin Bernstein. Devin, welcome to the channel. Happy to have you. Um, we're going to start off today just by, it's been a while on this channel. This channel has been dead, you could say, for the last year almost at this point. But we're going to be back with some more consistency, finally. So um, I think we're both going to introduce ourselves. So Devin, I'll start with you. Kind of tell us a little bit about yourself and the viewers at home. Yeah, so uh, I'm a friend of Griffin's from high school. Um, I'm a big fan of sports as well, and I'm I'm a student at Syracuse University. Uh, I'm gonna start my sophomore year right now. I uh, just moved in. Um, I'm just really excited to get on the podcast and you know talk about sports and just you know see where it goes and stuff like that. Um, yeah. So that's yeah. It. And uh, for any hopefully new viewers of the show, Devin's boys at Syracuse or family who knows or just you know this podcast is going to blow up this year i can feel it um, <laughs> i'm griffin um been doing this podcast now for like three four years um i'm a student at northwestern gonna be a sophomore as well um studying journalism so yeah both of us trying to make it in the sports broadcasting world and uh you know hoping you know to bring you guys some uh, some entertainment some information some breakdowns of everything in sports once a week so we're gonna dive right into it obviously right now uh, we're just a few weeks away. I guess yesterday was what two weeks from the kickoff of uh, Chiefs Lions yeah. on Thursday night. So yeah. I mean, we're super close at this point. Preseason training camp wrapping up, and uh, today we're going to do a breakdown of the AFC. Next weekend, I'm thinking we'll do a breakdown of the NFC, and then it's Week One. So we're right at the door. Um, we'll also kind of, as some, the season goes on, get into maybe some MLB. Although you know. The way the season went for my Mets, uh, we're going to stay away from that for as long as possible. But yeah, <laughs> jumping right in, um, we're going to start with arguably, I think, the best division in football, and that's the AFC East. A lot of storylines. We got Aaron Rodgers joining the Jets. The Bills stacked, as always. The Dolphins made some additions. They're in the headlines trying to trade for Jonathan Taylor. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But just right off the bat, I mean, if you had to go with your gut instinct, we're going to start with winner here. Who do you think wins this division and why? Um, my gut instinct is the Jets right now. Um, I'm thinking, I'm thinking your Jets will, I think they were just so much a quarterback away and no matter what you get from Rodgers, this is going to be just a humongous leap for the offense that is just, just needs to really be good to really, uh, you know, support this incredible defense. And I guess I'll get more into it with my bit of Bill's skepticism but I think you can kind of see the the course starting to run itself a little bit dry in Buffalo you know to an extent I think they've started to stagnate on defense especially um they're just like very old which teams that are younger tend to get better and teams that are older tend to get worse and when you're older on the defensive side of the ball that can be really concerning they've seen a lot of injuries you know they're really reliant on a 34 year old Von Miller um and I, I you know I think the only clear advantage they have is really at quarterback and that's why ultimately if you're still going to take the bills or anyone's going to argue with me about taking the bills I'm not going to be mad or anything but um I do think the overall roster is a little bit better for the Jets yeah so, I mean I'm definitely a little biased, but I do think the Jets, the way it is, like, I think they're built to win this division. I think it is, as a Jets fan and just in general, for the team that has suffered so much, um, it sucks that the time that their time, their Super Bowl window, is when their division is, like, arguably at its peak in the last, you know, 20, 30 years. I mean, every team in this division is good. I mean, the Patriots, I don't think, are great, but it's like, they're the Patriots. Like, they're going to win eight or nine games every year and be a pain yeah. in the ass. So, but yeah, I think the Jets, like you said, I mean, they were, what, a seven-win team last year with, you know, Zach Wilson and Mike White at QB. And now you got Aaron Rodgers, who won the MVP two years ago. And you bring in, you know, you've got Garrett Wilson, who I think is going to have a huge year. Um, and that defense run by Robert Zell, I mean, it's just so good. So um, I think the Jets are probably my favorite. Like you said, the Bills, like, I've never been – like, the Bills, I think, are such an interesting case because last offseason – and I've talked about it so much on this podcast, but just like the hype that I saw with the Bills was like the craziest thing I think I've ever seen. Like I was yeah, like yeah. every expert, every person on every channel was like Buffalo Bills are winning the Super Bowl. And then it was like they exit in the divisional round as usual. Like this, I think we've just kind of seen what this Bills team is, is capable of at this point. I hate to make 
I don't know why, but this comparison just came in my head. But like, kind of reminds me of your 76ers, not to be a hater, but like, it's like oh. they've kind of run the same thing out there like four or five years now. And it's just not, they haven't gotten into that next level. And it's just like, at some point you got to, you, you got to pivot. And, and look with Josh Allen, I mean, I'm not going to deny his talent. Like you said, like he is a top three quarterback in the NFL. He is a stud, but yeah, but you know, that defensive core is aging offense like digs there's been rumors of turmoil with him like it, it just seems like this team is uh you know they're gonna probably need to pivot with their core and, and just kind of find some new guys to latch on to but the rest of the division in, even is interesting i mean the dolphins i think they're a very you know not controversial but a very interesting team that people are torn on they've been in the rumors with jonathan taylor i think that would be a huge addition for them but where do you stand on the miami dolphins obviously some people have concerns with Tua, especially after the injuries last year. But what do you think the Dolphins kind of, you know, where do you expect them to end up at the end of the season? Um, I'm, I think my biggest hot take with the AFC East and maybe with the whole AFC conference is going to be how low I am on the Dolphins. Um, I, um, I don't think NFL teams get figured out as much as the media would really portray teams to get figured out I mean people kind of talk about that with the read option but you kind of still see it you know a decade later after it kind of came into the NFL still dominating in certain ways and certainly things have phases in and out but whatever I do think the Dolphins got got phased out uh got figured out in a sense I think Tua relies a lot on timing and he makes a lot of risky throws that oftentimes can lead to really explosive plays, but also can lead to a lot of turnovers. And he's also not someone who's like, especially physically talented, like a Josh Allen, where it's like when Josh Allen's turning the ball over one time a game, at least, you know, you're getting like four or five great throws and probably two or three incredible scrambles with Tua. It's like, it's mostly coming from the receivers and the line scares me and they just lost Jalen Ramsey for what looks like most of the year. And I know they brought in, you know, Vic Fangio, who's a great defensive coordinator, but I don't really think this was a team that needed a defensive coordinator upgrade as much as a team like the Vikings necessarily did. So I do think it's an upgrade, but I don't think it's like, this was the biggest weakness. So I don't think they got much, better at many spots I'm worried about Tua's health I'm worried about Tua when he does play I think we've seen teams that have a system quarterback and a really explosive uh playmaking group kind of have a tough time the second year when we, we saw that with the Niners the year after they made the Super Bowl we saw it with the Rams I think it was maybe the the year after they made the Super Bowl so kind of the second or third year they were good they kind of had a tough time so we've seen this happen before so long-winded way of saying I'm pretty low on the Dolphins I could still see them definitely winning nine ten games but if I had to pick I'd probably say more like eight or seven probably around where the Patriots end up maybe even last in the division which would be a big disappointment yeah I mean I, I definitely think they I mean they've done all the right things as a franchise like you look at the guys they're bringing in they brought in you know Tyree yep. Kill they brought in Teron Armstead who's you know arguably one of the better tackles in the NFL Jalen Ramsey obviously very unfortunate his injury, he was going to be such a huge part of that Dolphins defense. Um, I think, yeah, I mean, I think, I think I'd have them finishing above 500. I think like nine or 10 wins, but like, can they do better than that? Like, it's tough to say, like, like you said, like, I just feel like, you know, their receivers, like they're stacked a receiver, but like you said, like the quarterback play, it's like, it's almost like the Cowboys a little bit with Dak Prescott. Like you can have all the elite receivers you want, but at the end of the day, the quarterback is what matters and he's who's getting them the ball. And if he's going to be turning over the ball or just, you know, not on that elite level, then sometimes it, it doesn't really matter if you have, you know, the best receivers in the world. If you have a quarterback who can't get the ball to them efficiently, I think two had, you know, two last year, he was really good before all the concussions started coming. And I think, you know, that, that just derailed him and, you know, hopefully not his career. I mean, I know Tua gets kind of a, a lot of hate in the media, for whatever reason, but, uh, you know, I, I think everyone hopes to see him uh, succeed. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's why I think it, the Jonathan Taylor thing, I think would be really interesting. Cause I think I'm a big Mike McDaniel guy. I mean, I think he's got a, a great personality, but also just, I think he's a really intelligent uh, offensive coach. I think if you put a guy like JT in that offense with the weapons, they have like reek and waddle, it just makes defense's job so much harder. Cause then they're going to be worried so much more about the run. Whereas right now with like, I don't even know who it is, like Raheem Mostert or like a, a Jeff Wilson or something. It's like, all right, like, you know, those guys are just mediocre running backs. Whereas, you know, you get the, the NFL's leading rusher as of, you know, a year or two ago, 
in that offense, all of a sudden it's like, oh, holy cow. Um, health is is a big concern, though, just in general with this team. We've seen Rams already go down. Armstead, I think, was hurt the other day at practice. Two is obviously a mess. So, yeah, I, I'm not a, I don't think the Dolphins will win this division. Can they make the playoffs? Yes. Um, and I think it all comes down to Tua, which, you know, if he's healthy and, and plays how he did at the beginning of last year, I think the this team could be very good. But, you know, time will only tell. Yeah. Um, I think if I could just say one thing quickly on the the Taylor trade rumors, yeah. I think it would be the type of move that would really help them this year. And then I would I would question the long term validity if you're trading like either a one or like a two and a three or a two and two four, whatever it is, yeah. you're gonna be trading a lot then to pay him. I'm gonna I would, you know, be skeptical of that move, but I think it could help them this year, like you said. Um, and just quickly on the Patriots, I think. I think their defense is going to be scary. I, I, you know, I think my Eagles play them week one. I think, I think this could be a tough, a tough matchup. Um, you know, maybe an upset, whatever they keep it close, but I think it's going to be tough to score on this Patriots defense. Yeah. I mean that the Patriots are always good. I mean, you look at their offense, they went out, they, they brought in Juju, um, you know, Ramondre Stevenson, I think is a guy who, who's going to have a good year. And, you know, yeah. they got Zeke in there too, who, you know, Zeke, you know, sure, he's not in his prime anymore, but, you know, he's still efficient inside the, you know, five-yard line, and he can get you some yards here and then. Um, so, yeah, like you said, like, I think the Pats are going to be good. It's just, like, Mac Jones, it's like, the question for me is, like, have we seen kind of what this guy is going to do already, or is there, like, more potential, untapped potential in him that if that comes out, then, you know, maybe there's something. But um, I, I don't know. I feel like we've kind of seen what Mac Jones can do at this point. I don't know how much more, I mean, I feel like this is kind of just how he's been from his time at Alabama and we're kind of seeing more of the same in the NFL. And yeah, yeah but like you said, like the Patriots with a good defense and, and just running the ball down your damn throat, um, they're always going to be a problem. So I, I agree. I think this division is, is stacked off from bottom. Um, yeah. It, it's, it's going to be crazy. I mean, I think, like we said, I guess, you know, we're both picking the jets, but like any of these teams could come in last and especially with the jets luck, like, you know, who fucking knows what's going to happen, <laughs> honestly. Yeah, I mean, there's – if if I wanted to make sure that I'm not going to look like an idiot after this season, I'd be picking the Bills. But, yeah. um, you know, I think the Bills are a safer bet to be a playoff team. I'd be almost shocked unless, you know, someone gets injured if, if this completely falls off the rails for the Bills, whereas, like you said, with the Jets, who knows? And what we saw with Rodgers last year, I mean, he – there's just a high level of variance at such an important position. So, you know, they, they could certainly, you know, fail, but I just, I think there's just too much talent and I think they're too, they're, they're really seem focused. I think the loss of Corey Davis was something we should maybe touch on. Yeah. Just um, first of all, hope everything's okay. It seems like he had something, you know, I don't really want to speculate, but it didn't seem like a great situation there. Um, and I, I just think, you know, they're probably one playmaker short, you know, you've got Wilson and you've got a bunch of other complimentary pieces, but you'd like that second good reliable target, be it a tight end or a receiver, or even, you know, one of these elite pass catching backs. I mean, they're obviously stacked in the backfield, but none of them as pass catchers really. Um, so, you know, you'd like to see that, but other than that, I think they're one of the more complete rosters in the NFL. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think the Davis injury, Obviously, like you said, like prayers out to him. Hope he's doing okay. Um, but yeah, like it, it definitely, I think that was one where I was like, oh, like that's, it's just like you had depth at that room. He's a good blocking receiver. Like he was going to be like a piece. And now it's like, all right, well, you have Garrett Wilson, who I think is going to be, you know, a, a stud this year. I think he's going to have a huge year. And then it's like, all right, we got Alan Lazard, McCole Hardman. Like these guys are like, yeah, they'll have their big moments. But like in the terms of NFL receiver, like these guys are, not mediocre because they're solid, but like they're in the middle of, you know, they're not stars. Um, not saying you have to have superstar at every position, but I feel like a little bit better than like those guys, if they had another guy like that would be big, which is why I think when they were, uh, you know, not that Odell would be the guy. I mean, who knows what we're going to see with Odell. We'll touch on him in a minute yeah. and the Ravens, but like when they were rumored with him or even like a D hop, like, I feel like another guy like that would have been nice. And obviously now looking, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty, obviously, but, uh, you know, Randall Cobb's now wide receiver four. And after that, it's like, all right, well, I don't really even know who uh, who's there. So, yeah, a little concerning. But I don't think it's the – unless, like, like if Garrett Wilson goes down, then it's like, oh, okay, like this could be – it could Dang. be ugly. But um, with him there, I feel all right about, you know, them. But, yeah, it, you know, they're, they're 
and that's scary. You know, the one injury away from uh, being real weak potentially at wide receiver end. You know, so we'll see. But yeah, like you said, prayers out to Corey Davis. Hope he's doing all right. And uh, sucks for the Jets. Obviously, he's a uh, you know going to be a, a solid player for them. Solid piece. Yeah. All right. Um, I mean, real quick, we'll do a little quick fantasy in this division. Oh, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of playmakers. Obviously, you know the guys: Josh Allen, Tyree Kill. Aaron, uh, well, I guess Aaron Rodgers kind of being slept on a little bit this year. Garrett Wilson, you know, all these guys. Give me one sleeper if you had to in this division that you think, you know, fantasy fantasy players should target. Maybe, you know, I don't, it can be wherever in the draft, but a yeah. guy that you think is being slept on a little bit. I'm going to give maybe the deepest sleeper I have, which is going to be Trent Sherfield. He's on okay. the Bills now. Um, I – I've heard that he is is looking good at this wide receiver three spot. And, you know, Allen has formed a good connection with a lot of his slot receivers in the past. Um, I could think we could see a lot of digs in the slot this year, which could be interesting for Diggs' production. But if they keep Sherfield in the slot or Khalil Shakir, who I really like coming out, whoever kind of wins that wide receiver three spot could be a good uh, pickup and flex type play. I didn't have any other huge sleepers, you know, in terms of starters or stars that I thought were being undervalued a ton. So that was, that was my pick for, uh, for this division. Yeah. I mean, that's a, that's a deep sleeper. Um, yeah. I, mean, I'm trying to think. <laughs> I like, it's not like a, I don't know. There's two guys in my mind right now. They're, I wouldn't consider either of them sleepers, but just in terms of where they're being drafted at, I like Aaron Rodgers a lot. Like he's being drafted. Yeah. I don't know what, but like QB 12 or something like that, like yeah. past QB 10, I think. And I think, like, like if you look at what Rodgers was doing in his MVP season, not that he's going to be that high level of production, but, like, he was a top five fantasy QB. And I think there's no reason why he's not going to be better than last year. I think his weapons are better. Oh, I think yeah. this offense is better than the Packers one. So I think I think he's going to have a really good year. So I think he's a guy, if you're kind of going to wait on a QB, I think you can get him you know, super late in drafts. And then another guy who I think is super interesting is James Cook on the Bills. Um, you know, he's mm-hmm. kind of, you know, Damian Harris left. Or Damian Harris is there, and Devin Singletary is there. Is yeah, what it was yes. Yep. Um. So we'll see what the, the the dividend is. But James Cook, I mean, he's a talented player. Obviously, he comes from a very athletic family. Um. But I think you know he could be a guy that maybe we see a breakout. I mean, someone's kind of got to break out on this Bills offense yeah. if they're going to take it in the next level. And and Sean McDermott might be looking at James Cook to be the guy. So, um, he's another guy that maybe I'd be looking at, but. I guess my if I had to pick one like Aaron Rodgers, I guess, which is weird to call him a sleeper because it's like yeah. sleepers like like you said like a Trent Sherfield, but I didn't really have a good one. So um, yeah, we'll we'll move on to another really strong division, the AFC North. A lot of good young quarterbacks. You got Joe Burrow, Lamar, Deshaun Watson, and uh, Kenny Pickett. Um, another one where you know all these teams are probably going to be really good this year. What are you thinking right now in terms of uh, who who you'd have winning it? Yeah, probably less of a shocker here, but I, I'd lean towards the Bengals um, just because I think, you know, this is a really consistent team that, you know, has had continuity at quarterback, coach, um, the, you know, the top receiver, their edge rusher, Trey Hendrickson's been there for a few years. This isn't a team that's lost any key pieces or, you know, seen a coordinator go out the door, which I think is a big thing. So I really, you know, besides a tough schedule, I don't see any reason for this team to, you know, get worse on paper going into, you know, next year's playoffs. I don't see this team, you know, being anywhere less than, you know, maybe 10 wins or, you know, a team could maybe beat them. But I really, you know, if I, I'm picking, I'm definitely going with the Bengals here. Yeah, I hate to agree with you again, but um, I, I can't pick against the Bengals. I mean, I think. Joe Burrow is the best quarterback, not named Patrick Mahomes in the NFL right now. Yeah. Um, this team, they're just like offensively, it's just like ridiculous. Like Jamar Chase and, and T. Higgins on, on opposite ends of each other. And then Tyler Boyd's a solid piece. You got Joe Mixon still there. Um, and they improved the old line signing Orlando Brown. Um, I thought that was a great signing for them. So they finally kind of built, it seems like a, a decent old line to protect Joe Burrow. Um, you know, hopefully he plays week one. Obviously, a little uncertainty right now with his injury. If that kind of extends into maybe a two, three week absence, maybe, you know, this is a good division, you know, you don't want to lose any week you can. So then maybe it changes a little bit on the outlook, but I think Burrow will probably play in week one or two, but you know, they're probably not going to push it with him. You don't want to risk a long-term injury, but yeah, like you said, like this team, they're pretty good defensively. I think they're underrated defensively. Trey Hendrickson, one of those guys, like you mentioned, Um, Logan Wilson, really good linebacker. He's one of the better young 
uh, defenders in the game. So I think this team, once again, going to be really good. But moving on to the other teams of this division, I mean, it's really a lot of interesting teams. I think the Cleveland Browns have one of the deepest rosters potentially in the NFL. It's just a question of can Deshaun Watson be the guy it, he was in Houston? What's your thoughts on that? Do you think Deshaun can get back to that level? Yeah, I mean, I'm just going to start off and say that I think the Browns are absolutely loaded, like you said. Um, I think this is a team that has every piece. And, you know, I kind of tried to avoid that Deshaun Watson question because I really don't have an answer. I mean, I, I think, you know, there's obviously the question of, you know, whether you're rooting for him and all that. But, you know, that beside that aside, um, I think there's the question of, you know, what happened last year? Because, you know, there was an adjustment period. It's a new scheme, a new team. He hadn't played in a year and a half. All of this, I, I understand all of that, you know, as much as it was kind of his own doing to an extent, you know, it, there were obvious football reasons for, for a level of rustiness. But, you know, what happened was he looked lost out there and looked like someone who kind of, you know, forgot how to play quarterback. And that just leads to such a high level of variance of what could happen this year after how well we've seen him play. And I think ultimately you're going to get, you know, some weeks where he looks like the Deshaun Watson of old and, you know, the playmaking is there. And, the you know, he's just, you know, out of the pocket and, you know, down the field to, you know, weapons like Amari and Elijah Moore. I think, you know, there are a lot of good things he's going to be able to do. But some weeks he's he's going to look lost and he's going to look like we're going to be wondering what, you know, what the Browns were thinking when they made this trade. Yeah, I mean, Cleveland, like, I think, that, I mean, this, I think they are, it's all on Watson at this point. I mean, I think yeah. their roster, yeah. obviously they've had some defensive issues. I think their defense is going to be better under new coordinator Jim Schwartz. I think this team, you know, they've got the pieces like Miles Garrett's one of the best defenders in the NFL. Denzel Ward, Greg Newsome, like that's a great cornerback duo. You know, they've got some veterans at the linebacking position. JOK, you know, a young guy who, who's, you know, played pretty well in Cleveland. Um, they've got Zadarius Smith now, Dalvin Thomas. And like biggest. there's just all these names. Like, it, you know, it kind of keeps going, which is crazy. And then on the offensive side, like O-line stack, Nick Chubb, best running back in the NFL. Like, it's like everywhere you look, it's like this team barely has a weakness. It's just the quarterback position is such an unknown. And like you said, like Watson last year, like he was terrible flat out. Like he didn't look like anything he was in Houston. He looked like he was lost. Like you said, like he just didn't look comfortable. And maybe that's, you know, Kevin Stefanski not doing his job and and making the offense geared towards him and his strengths. Or, you know, like you said, there's a lot of rust. Obviously, he hadn't played in, you know, basically two years. Um, so I, it's all on Deshaun Watson. Can he get back to that Houston level? I'll be honest. I don't think he can. I don't think, I think, you know, when you're in your prime, I think that was his peak. I think, I, I just think taking the two years off is just, it's something that we haven't really seen almost. Like I can't really think of a parallel to where a guy, a quarterback, like in his prime has just not played for two years because of, you know, not even injury, just because of, you know, oh. off the field reasons. I mean, Vic um, is the only one I can think yeah. of. Uh, you know, obviously his career kind of derailed at the end. Yeah. So it's like, I just don't know. I don't think he can get back to that Houston level, but I don't think the Browns need him to get to that level. I think he can be, as long as he's a pretty solid and good quarterback, this Cleveland Browns team should be in the playoffs. And obviously the AFC stacked, this division stacked, but like their roster is so complete that, if Deshaun Watson is a good quarterback, they, they should win 10 or 11 games, in my opinion. It's just a matter of, like, if he plays how he did last year, then this team's probably a 7-8, a maybe 9, but probably not 9-win team. So it's really on Watson. I don't think he'll get back to, you know, kind of that level we saw with him in Houston with D-Hot, but can he be a, still a good, maybe, you know, getting closer towards elite consideration? I think there's still potential, but I think this year is huge, and, you know, I think if he has another bad year, then you know, maybe Cleveland starts even looking at like DTR and is like, you know, obviously they're on the, the hook with all that money and you don't want to move away from that. But like with this core, like you can't just waste Nick Chubb and Miles Garrett and all these no. guys for more years. No, you're absolutely right. It, it'll be interesting to see kind of what unfolds if this season doesn't go, how <clears throat> that front office is envisioned it going with all the with all the chips they've pushed to the, you know, the center of the table this season. Yeah, absolutely. And move on to the other team that, you know, their preseason record was snapped the other day by, uh, what was the guy, Sam Cosme and the uh, yeah. Washington uh, yeah. Commanders. <laughs> you know, good for him. He talked his, he talked his smack, backed it up. 
Um, but yeah, Baltimore Ravens, another really good team. This team added some weapons. Obviously, you got OBJ, Zay Flowers now, um, Lamar coming back, Mark Andrews is back. You know, this Ravens team should be really good. They should be really good defensively. Kind of where do you stand on them? And, uh, you know, I think one thing with them is kind of like the Bills, they've been good, but they haven't been able to make that leap. Do you think this team can truly contend and win a Super Bowl? Or do you think they're still kind of stuck in that kind of middle ground where they're, you know, in the playoffs, but, you know, just can't get to that next level? So I think there there are two questions that you have to ask yourself when you when you think about the Ravens this year. And you, the two questions that I think will be answered is how what is Lamar's ceiling as a passer? And what is this defense's seal? Because the first the first question is an obvious big question we've been asking for years. What can Lamar be in a true NFL offense with good NFL receivers where he is dropping back, you know, up to maybe 30 in certain circumstances in the 40s, you know, times per game when he's not going to be able to rely on that rushing game quite as much every game necessarily um what what is his ceiling where is he is he the eighth best quarterback in the league is he the fourth is he the 12th is he you know that's a big question that's going to be answered and ultimately I would say I believe in that in him to be on the higher end of what people would think you know maybe in the seven to eight range or six something like that um as a true passer and you know I think this defense is really really exciting to me I think there's some questions you know, maybe like cornerback three is a little bit iffy, the health of Ronald Darby. But, you know, you're a little bit picking at straws here, and I do trust the Ravens to figure it out with how well coached they are. And Harbaugh and the special teams always seems to be really good there with Tucker. And, you know, they just seem to kind of win win games even when they haven't been healthy. And, you know, they seem to be a team that's always hurt for some reason. But, again, you just say it. If they can be healthy, I, I do believe – I believe there are three Super Bowl contenders in this division. I really do. Yeah, I mean, like you said, I think, you know, again, like it, it, it's going to be fun to watch Lamar, I think, this year. I think Lamar is a guy who – another guy who people have kind of just dismissed and kind of, like, forget what he did his MVP season and what he's capable of. Like, this guy is – he's a true talent. I'm happy he finally got paid, obviously – you know, he he kind of went through it for a few years, not getting that extension, but he he deserves all the money he got. And I think this team's going to be really good. I think Zay Flowers is a guy who, you know, a lot of experts are, are saying is going to be really good. OBJ, to be honest, I don't know what's left in the tank with him. You know, two ACL tears now. Um, you know, I saw some video of him, like, you know, catching a one-hand ball in warm-ups. I mean, it's like this, I feel like it's the same shit we've been seeing for the last, like, five years with Odell. And it's just like, I don't think he's, you know, elite anymore, but yeah. Can he be a solid receiver? Uh, yeah, probably. I think, um, you know, whatever you get from Odell is almost house money in a sense. No, totally. So I think, honestly, like for this offense, like I think Zay Flowers is definitely the guy that they're looking at to be like that breakout wide receiver. Because, you know, outside of him, if he doesn't, you know, if he doesn't turn out to be a stud, I, you know, like, it's, like we said, kind of just a bunch of average receivers there potentially. Mark Andrews, obviously one of the best in the business at his position. Um, and one thing you brought up that I actually want to talk about is like the special teams, like Justin Tucker, um, like you said, like just having a good kicker, like it's kind of weird, but like it really can like get you a few wins. Like the amount of kicks that guy makes, like he's automatic late in the game. And it reminds me of like on the flip side, Cleveland Browns, they've got Cade York, who it seems like in the games, like this guy cannot make a kick to save his life, can't make a game winning kick to save his life. And like, if you miss, like, like if you have like, let's say two kicks a year, that are either like game winning or you got to make to tie the game. And like the difference between making and missing those like is like two wins. And like the Ravens have that, you know, obviously have a big edge with Tucker and the Browns, you know, maybe don't with York, like that stuff adds up. And, and I definitely think that's something to not be overlooked. I think the Ravens, like you said, they're going to be a really good team. I'm still like, I, I don't know if they could beat like the chiefs. Like if, if I, I don't know, like, or even the Bengals, like I, I, I still wouldn't put them like in my top tier in the AFC. Like I think for me, it's still Chiefs and Chiefs and Bengals. I would put up here, and then we've got a lot of teams like Buffalo, Baltimore, the Jets, um, the Chargers. Like all these teams where it's like, yeah, they they've got like real talent, but it's like we haven't seen them make that step, and like someone needs to step up for them to uh, you know get to that next year. So we'll see. Um, but the Ravens are always good. It's just a matter of can they string it together in the playoffs? And like you said, like the playmakers at wide receiver, is it going to be enough to, you know, unlock something from Lamar we haven't really seen yet in his NFL career? 
Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah, I think there's, yeah, I think that ceiling of can they go out and beat a Bengals or a Chiefs, that's a good question to ask about that Ravens team. Um, But we'll have to see. I think we're both pretty much in agreement. I think the Steelers are almost a bit like the Patriots. Yes. Um, Same kind of vibe, like with the head coach and just like the consistency, like they're just like every year, like winning record, you know? Yeah. So, I mean, I guess they're maybe slightly more exciting. I guess, I, you know, Pickett probably has more potential than Mac Jones for me. I, I'm probably more excited to see him, more excited to see a Pickens and a Deontay Johnson out there. Um, so I guess I could see them being maybe a slightly better version of the Patriots on offense with maybe a, a similar defense, but they're also in a really tough division. So they're really a team that is just pigeonholed for somewhere in the eight to 10 win win region. Yeah, definitely. I mean, they've, they've got the pieces, they've got superstars, especially on that defense. I mean, that defense, like, like it's like the pay, like literally the same thing as the Patriots, almost like elite defense, insanely well coached and just like a young quarterback who's kind of still figuring out his way. What's he going to do? And like, if Kenny Pickett makes that leap, then this team is going to win 10 games. I think for sure. Like, if he can be a solid quarterback, like they've got the weapons. You've got Deontay Johnson, who, you know, he's solid. George Pickens, you know, a guy who he's probably one of the most hyped up players, I think, in the NFL right now, if I'm yeah. being honest. Like he's got the media rolling with him. I mean, rightfully so. These some of the catches this guy makes oh, is, yeah. is stuff we've like never seen before. Um, can he be though, you know, can he move off of that, you know, I'm trying to phrase it, but like can he move off of the like superstar or like phenom? I'm trying to phrase it, but can he get to that level of being like an elite NFL receiver? Whereas I feel like right now it's like kind of a more like highlight reel, but like, you know, he's only having like a few catches. I don't know. I'm phrasing that badly. It's more of an idea right now, I guess. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like, yeah. He, you know, he's not a bad player, but what he's shown is, is superstar potential, you know, and, you know, just, it's just rare. You see someone come into the league and dominate every contested catch it seems like and the numbers back it up the tape backs it up the highlights back it up there is no there's no one that is arguing that George Pickens isn't one of the best you know go get it receivers in the league so when you can do that at age 21 22 you know this the you know that's a bet I'm taking uh if if we want to transition to the fantasy segment you know he was one of my sleepers in this division um, I really like the way Najee ran last year. So at, towards the end of last year. So I, you know, just think that's a solid RB2 to potential RB1. You know, I like his value. Um, and then I like both of the Browns receivers as well. And Elijah Moore and Amari Cooper are both just <clears throat> being drafted way too low, in my opinion, with both high upside and, you know, someone's going to have to be catching it, you know, the ball in this offense. And, yeah. you know, they have one of the best offensive lines and run games in the league. So they're going to be getting open um just a question of whether Watson can hit them yeah I think uh you know same with the Browns pass catchers I think David Njoku is a guy who I really like too he definitely shown flashes the Browns paid him a lot of money um you know I think he's one of the better tight ends um you know maybe he's not in that top five seven range yet but like he's you know probably on on the borderline top 10 but I think like you said like someone's got to catch the ball in this offense Watson and him you know they they had their moments they showed somewhat of a connection you know, only hopefully have built that this off season. So I think he's a guy, if you're waiting kind of for tight ends, you can probably get him in the later rounds a little bit. Um, in terms of other sleeper, I mean, you bring up Najee. Najee's a really good guy, a guy that I'd be interested in. This is like a, a more of a deep sleeper, like late bench stash, but like a Jalen Warren, like he played a lot in this offense. Um, you know, Najee, like you said, like he was good at the end, but like he kind of, you know, he struggled. It was a, it was a, a down step from his rookie year in terms of, you know, touches, efficiency and all that um so does you know Najee does Jalen Warren become more of a piece in this offense you know he's a guy that maybe obviously if Najee goes down then this guy could be set up for like a, a you know workhorse type workload workhorse type workload good good English there um <laughs> he'd be more of a bell cow I think is what I, the word I'm searching for but yeah. yeah um you know he's a guy maybe a little late stash that you know maybe some opportunities emerge for him they, they use him a little more and yeah, I don't know. But yeah, him and Njoku, I'll go with for uh, my sleepers in this division. Gotcha. All right, moving on to the uh, division of the young quarterbacks. A lot of, uh, I mean, the future is bright in this division. You've got four guys who are on rookie deals in uh, the AFC South. I think probably both of us are going to have the same division winner again. 
Um, I'll start off real quick with the Jaguars. I think yeah. you know, we saw it last year from them. Trevor Lawrence really making that leap. I've been, you know, not a hater, but, you know, I've been a little lower on Trevor Lawrence from uh, than most guys. I feel like part of that stemming from uh, my good uh, debates with our friend Charlie Lee and uh, <laughs> in journalism class over who's better between him and Justin Fields. So I've been a little biased, but, you know, respect credit where credit's due. Trevor balled out last year and this offense should only be better with Calvin Ridley in there. Evan Ingram broke out last year. He had a really good year. Christian Kirk, another guy who, who's been solid in this defense. Eh, like, but in this yeah. division, it's good enough to win. So, um, yeah, I'm going to go with the Jaguars to win this division. Trevor Lawrence, you know, he he's 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 showing that potential and what made him the number one overall pick. And, you know, at one at one point, why he was considered, you know, one of the best quarterback prospects we've seen in the last, you know, 20, 30 years. Yeah, I think um, I'm pretty – I'm pretty set on where I think this Jags team is. I think they're pretty firmly a year away with the potential to be kind of frisky this year. Um, I would put them in a similar category to where I I had the Chargers, you know, a year or two ago, and I guess kind of still to this point um, where I'm confident in that offense. And I guess it's a little different where the Chargers kind of have the pieces on defense, but they're, you know, they're more of a health and Chargers issue. Um, whereas the, the Jags, I would say it's more the defense where, like you said, it's kind of just meh. And I think it's just going to be tough for them to compete against the best of the best teams. Um, I really like that Ridley edition, like you talked about. Um, so I'm, I'm pretty confident this is a team that wins the division. Um, I don't think there's a team that's winning, you know, 13 or 14 or 12 games probably, but they're probably winning this division, maybe winning a playoff game like they did last year and probably, you know, looking to keep getting better and better as we, you know, get forward and they add some more pieces and then maybe really make a run in the next year or two. Yeah, no, definitely. Agree. I think, uh, you know, that offense has the potential to be, you know, kind of, kind of ready to make a run. Um, it's just the defense for me that, I, you know, I'm, I was trying to pull up the depth chart just to get a reminder, but like Josh Allen, obviously, uh, you know, a stud on that defensive line, but, you know, outside of him, I'm trying to think of like who they're like big, like, I don't think they really have any huge playmakers, which is kind of where it's like, all right, like, you know, you, you got, you got, you got a really good offense, really good young quarterback. But like you said, like there's just room for improvement to where they'd be on that next level, especially in this AFC. Like, it's just like the AFC is just ridiculous. I mean, it's like compared to the NFC, it's the quarterback level of like the amount of elite quarterbacks and just like the talent is just ridiculous. Like the, it, yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm just going to stop talking about the AFC. Um, I don't know what I'm saying right now. But, yeah, Jaguars defensively probably missing a piece or two. Um, do you have anything else to say on them, or you want to move on to the other teams? Um, no, I'm, I'm good. I think we can okay. move on. Um, so, obviously, you know, we've got C.J. Stroud, the Texans, Anthony Richardson, and the Colts. Titans are, you know, looks like they're going to run out Tannehill. But, you know, Will Levis, Malik Willis, one of those guys probably – who they're going to hand the keys to the franchise to, um, you know, the Titans are in a weird spot. So I'll move on to the other two teams, Colts and the Texans. Obviously we'll start with the Texans, um, CJ Stroud, or no, here's what we'll do. CJ Stroud versus Anthony, Anthony Richardson. If you want to throw Will Levis in there, you can, who out of those guys do you feel like is going to have the brightest NFL future and the guy who you see kind of being the guy to potentially rival Trevor Lawrence in this division for the next you know decade? Yeah, I, I, I'd say pretty confidently I see Richardson really, um, really blooming. I think it's not often you see a quarterback, you know, the athletic tools of Josh Allen coming out. And, you know, his college tape was a disaster, but it wasn't <laughs> awful. Um, and I think I think it was a disaster because, you know, if you look at his stats and his completion percentage was like in the low 50s and you're like, that is disgusting. But this is, you know, you just have to give him a bit of context in the sense of you watch him play and he actually, he knows how to move his feet in the pocket. He knows how to sense pressure. He, he has a sense to play the quarterback position that, you know, you see certain guys coming out that, you know, they're such, they're, they're all tools and there's no, they're, they don't know how to play quarterback at all. And I don't think that's the case with Richardson, but there was a lot, you know, between the, you know, to timing with the receivers, the accuracy, the reading of the defenses that needs to be worked on. But I'm just so high on the athletic traits and 
his feel for the position in a sense. And I'm just betting on Richardson um, and this coaching staff to really get the best out of him. Um, and I think he could be one of the most dynamic rushing quarterbacks in the league. Yeah, I, I think Richardson's, you know, a, a fascinating prospect, obviously super raw. And, uh, you know, he's he's got to learn a little bit and just kind of get used to it. Like you said, like, he really hasn't played that much. And, like, the tape from yep. college, it wasn't anything special. It's more, you know, just the, the thought of the potential, especially um, with, uh, you know, St- Shane Steichen, I believe that's how you pronounce yep. it. I might have botched that. But, uh, you know, he obviously – look at what he did with Jalen Hurts and look at where he is now in the Eagles offense. If you can imagine that with Richardson, um, you know, oh, my God. For me, though, I am going to go with C.J. Stroud. Um, I, I just look back. Like you said, you bring up the tape. Like I look at that Georgia game, and I'm just, yep. it's just it, for me, it was, and obviously we haven't really seen it from him, but the Justin Fields Clemson game, like it really reminded me of that, where it's like it just showed you what this guy can do at the highest level. And looking out, like that Georgia defense, elite all year, unstoppable. You had Jalen Carter, who, you know, before everything went down, was being looked at as a number one overall pick. He's still going to be an absolute force in the NFL for years to come for your Philadelphia Eagles. What a steal they got. Um, yeah. You know, that defense was star-studded. Obviously, Stroud, you know, very good weapons. But once Marvin Harrison Jr. even goes down, he was still, you know, finding his receivers, making a way, making, you know, making plays. So I think really he – I think, you know, a lot of people are not really big on this guy. And the one thing that I am concerned about is just the weapons and, and the construction of the roster in Houston. Uh, the Will Anderson trade, I mean, obviously, you know, if Will Anderson turns out to be the next, like, T.J. Watt or, or elite edge rusher – and it's like, all right, you can kind of understand it. But I think this team, you know, trading their own first round pick next year, which could be like as high as like two people are really projecting it. And, and you know, I, I just think they would have been so much better off holding their pick this year, going with a guy like a JSN, Jackson Smith and Jigbo, who's got that, you know, connection already with Stroud. And then maybe even going after like Marvin Harrison next year and just like stacking this guy with weapons. Um but obviously they they're really high on Will Anderson. They they think probably that you know he's going to be their guy. Um, but yeah, I can't. That trades it's kind of mind boggling when it happened. So that's what I'm worried about. I feel like you know. But even for both these guys, I mean Richardson. We'll talk about the JT thing in a second. But like they're both in a spot where you know weapons wise it, it's a little bleak. And uh, you know obviously you've got guys like you know. <laughs> Like, but that's the thing. Like, I'm thinking of the Houston weapons. It's like, we got Robert Woods. We got Nico Collins. It's like, oh, my God. Like, what are we doing here? Like, I, you know, maybe Tank Dell breaks out or something like that. But, you know, the weapons aren't really there, which definitely concerns me. Like, I don't think this rookie year is going to be pretty from CJ Strata. I just don't think he's got the weapons to do it. Um, so, I think we're going to see some growing pains. I think if he does get the right weapons, though, um, just looking at that Georgia tape, I think he can be the guy. But, obviously, roster construction – a, a little shaky and uh, I am a little concerned about it yeah I mean I think to project either of these guys to really blow you know blow anyone's minds away their rookie year is just a little bit too ambitious yeah. just you know Stroud it's like you said the weapons and Richardson you know no one was not even the biggest believer you know in him or a big believer in him like myself is is going to project him to be you know anywhere near a good passing quarterback at this stage it's just not not really reasonable for either of them to be great this year. But I think I am high on Stroud. I, I think there's almost no world where he's not a good NFL quarterback once he gets surrounded with the proper weapons. Um, And I think, like you said, that Georgia game really did show some upside that, you know, whether it's there or not, we don't know yeah. because, you know, he really kind of did it once, but he really put the team on his back in that game against, like you said, an elite defense um, at the college level and, you know, something that, you know, we, we really only saw Bryce Young do um, of the quarterbacks in this class. I think, you know, that was a Bryce yeah. Young S game we saw from him. Totally. Absolutely. And, you know, we, we've kind of talked about it here and there all episode already, but Jonathan Taylor, I mean, it's kind of yeah. one of the biggest news right now in the sport, the whole mess that's going on with Jim Irsay and him and, and the tweets and just, you know, now it's gotten to the point where he's, you know, requested a trade. They're looking for it. They have a deadline set for Tuesday. Seems like kind of teams like the Dolphins, the Broncos, maybe maybe your Eagles, uh, the Rams, kind of teams like that, kind of in the mix for him. But what a mess for the Colts. I mean, I just don't even understand this guy's your entire offense pretty much. You look at what he did two years ago. Um, I mean, what are your thoughts on the situation and kind of how do you see it playing out from here? Do you think he gets traded or do you think they end up not liking a deal and just hold on to him? 
Um, I'm going to start off by saying I hope he stays because I I hope this is this is both the turnaround for the running back market and the turnaround for one of my big football takes of the last year is that you pay players not positions. You know you gotta you gotta forget sometimes what position a guy plays and remember that this guy is literally the backbone of what your team has been building for the last two years. You know, you've been trying to build a dominant run game. You're trying to get Anthony Richardson to build this dynamic run game. I mean, imagine if you could get a fully developed Richardson as a passer with his 4-4 speed and Taylor and that offensive line and a growing group of weapons. You know, this isn't a Houston where you don't have anyone. I mean, Michael Pitt is an established good NFL receiver. I think Alec Pierce is you know, someone who I think will be a starting receiver at some point in the NFL, you know, is it loaded? No, but there are pieces here and, you know, you have money, you're going to have picks coming up in the future that are probably pretty high in the draft. I just don't see why you trade away a general, you know, not a generational, sorry, but a superstar level talent like Taylor when, you know, what, what you're going to ultimately want to do when you draft players with the picks you got to replace him is get a player like him you know just keep him in the building pay him it's not going to be that expensive with the running back market I really think they should pay him but um I as in terms of what happens I I really I really can't I can't say I think it depends on who's running things here um if Ursay is in control I think he's going to trade him and if the GM and or coach are making the decision here I think they're going to keep him so that's really all I can say yeah I mean like you said I mean I I think you phrased it perfectly like pay the player not the position like it's like look at this guy was the NFL's leading rusher like two years ago and like he's just so talented and he's their whole offense. Like, if you trade him, like, there's – it's just – ugh, it's, like, unthinkable that some of these, you know – and here's what I'll say about the running back market. There's a huge difference between Jonathan Taylor right now and, like, an Austin Eckler. Like, I understand right. not wanting to pay, like, a 28, 29, 30-year-old yep. running back a huge contract long-term because it's probably not going to work out. We've seen running backs – you know, once they hit that kind of 29, 30 mark, they do slow down and they do kind of, you know, not have that same production. And, you know, they're now we've seen it with guys like Dalvin, Zeke. Those are guys who, you know, in their peak right off that rookie contract, that first deal they got was probably worth it. I don't think the teams would – maybe the Zeke one was a little much, but, like, the Dalvin Cook deal, like, he was elite. Like, Dalvin Cook was elite for many seasons. Like, you look at, like, a guy um, like a Nick, Nick yeah. Chubb, Derrick Henry, like, their first contract's, like, well, well worth it. So I think for Jonathan Taylor, like, he's going to be good for the next five, six years, most likely, and be one of the best running backs. So paying him, like, you're going to have to pay him to get an elite player. And this whole notion of, and now we're kind of going on a tangent, but it's fine, of like, oh, well, running backs are just so replaceable. It's like, you can't just stick, like, Raheem Mostert or someone in there and expect the same level of production. Like, it's just, that's not how it works, unfortunately. And I think it's being blown out of proportion. I think teams are going to start to realize that and like running, it's such an important position of the game. It really is. And obviously you can win without an elite running back. You look at the two teams in the Super Bowl last year, neither of those teams had a running back that I think would be considered elite. Obviously, you know, Miles Sanders, Pacheco, like those are solid running backs in the NFL. So you can win without it. But look at those two teams and what they have at the quarterback position and elsewhere on their team, like uh, pro bowlers on pro bowlers. The Colts don't have that. Some of these teams don't have that. So you got to pay your best player. I mean, Jonathan Taylor was an MVP candidate like two years ago. It's, it boggles my mind that this is happening. So I hope the Colts get it figured out. If not, you know, I mean, imagine if the Eagles get this guy. Like, it, it's like game over if they somehow get him. But, you know, the price is high. Some teams are going to be reluctant to give up a, a big asset for him when, you know, they don't necessarily need him to be a Super Bowl contender team. So we'll see. Um, total mess, though, and, uh, you know, yeah, it's crazy that we've gotten to this level. But Jonathan Taylor, I hope he does get his money because he deserves it. He's one of the most exciting young running backs in the game. And there's no reason to think that you know, he's just going to stop being good in a year. That's just yeah. – it's not where he's at in his career compared to some of these other guys. Yeah. No, you hit the nail on the head. So, I think I'm happy to move on to the AFC yeah. West if you are. Let's do it. AFC West, very interesting division. Uh, last year, wide – 100% I think considered the best in 
you know, didn't really live up to expectations. Obviously, you've got the Chiefs. We know what we're getting with them. I feel like we don't even need to touch on them. We will, though. Uh, but outside of the Chiefs, obviously, you know, three teams that are, you know, looking to have improved seasons. Obviously, the Chargers made the playoffs. Raiders were disappointed last year. Denver, obviously, the biggest disappointment in the NFL. So out of those three teams, which do you see kind of be, being able to make that next leap to where they finished last year? Or maybe your, fin- your favorite. I mean, the Chargers, are, no, I don't know. What's your favorite team, Devin, out of those three to finish second in this division? Because I feel like we both will have the Chiefs finishing one as a, you know, yeah. I feel like, yeah. Yeah, I I do have the Chiefs finishing one, and I do have the Chargers finishing two, unfortunately. I, I wish I could give a hot take, but um, I, I just think this Chargers team has really improved. You know, I think the biggest thing in the NFL you can do is improve your weaknesses, and that's so obvious. But what this team really struggled with last year was, I think, an offense that really didn't fit their team, and they struggled with health issues on defense. So... The way I see it is it can't really get worse in terms of how hurt they were on defense. And this defense actually really started to be coached well. I started to like what Brandon Staley did towards the end of the last year. So I'm starting to get, you know, some confidence in that defense. And I think they really improved the play calling with Kellen Moore, who I think is both a good offensive coordinator just in general, but also is a really good fit for Herbert and this offense. They drafted Quentin Johnson, who's just more athletic than both Mike Williams and Keenan Allen, who are both really good players, but, you know, you're just getting some more athleticism and another guy for the future. You've got Gerald Everett. You've got a good line. Finally, this is just a team that I think, you know, has everything except for the fact that they're the Chargers and they always seem to figure something (laughs) out um, to, you know, break our hearts because they're, they seem to be one of the teams that everyone, you know, has a bit of a soft spot for, but they never seem to get it done. So hopefully this is the year, but that, that would be my, my second pick uh, for sure. Yeah, I, I, I would agree. I mean, it's hard to pick against the Chargers, I feel like. But, yeah, like you said, like, it, this team always seems to find a way to kind of be a letdown. But this team, like, offensively, absolutely loaded. Defensively, they've got the superstars. you got Joey Bosa. You've got Derwin James. They've got the big names. And they're, uh, you know, Brendan Staley, obviously, you know, he's on the hot seat, if we're being honest. Yep. Like, if it's a ba- another bad year, disappointing. You know, if they, I think even if they don't win a playoff game, if they make the playoffs and lose – round one I think he's probably out of there just because of the expectations you've got Herbert who I do think he obviously just got paid this huge contract he last year was a bit of a disappointment um you know he was banged up though but I do think he needs to take that next step I still think we haven't seen that kind of superstar season from Herbert maybe two years ago you could look at and say you know this is you know an elite season um but I just think, I, like, I, I, I want to see, like, MVP Justin Herbert. And I feel yeah. like we haven't seen that yet. I feel like with the money he's getting, that's what the Chargers expect. I feel like that's what a lot of people expect with all the, uh, you know, kind of believers in him. People think he's a top five quarterback, rightfully so. I mean, he's one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL. But I still want to see a little more from him. And I think if we do get that little more and this team stays healthy, they're going to be a serious threat in the AFC um, for years to come. I mean, this – him versus Mahomes, I think that's that's the key. I think Herbert has to get on that MVP level for them to compete with the Chiefs. And can he do that? 100%, I think so. Will he do it? That's the question. And yeah. I don't know what would stop him, injury, or, or I don't know. But <laughs> that was, didn't make much sense, I feel like. But, yeah, the Chargers, I feel like, should finish second. I guess the question then goes on to the next two teams, Raiders and Broncos. You know, both teams kind of have their flaws. Raiders going with Jimmy G now this year. How would you rank those two teams in terms of, you know, who you think finishes third in this division? Yeah, I think pretty tentatively the Broncos, but I could see it going either way. I could, I'll say this. I think the Broncos have the potential to really, um, you know, be a disaster once again um, that people are kind of not talking about a little bit, which worries me because no one was talking about it last year and then it went south. And now everyone seems to think this year is going to go much better. But, you know, if Russell Wilson doesn't know how to play quarterback anymore, <laughs> there's not much Sean Payton is going to be able to do. Um, yeah. And I, I don't necessarily think that was the wrong move to make, but it's just really tough when you traded all this for a franchise quarterback who's not playing like a franchise quarterback. So, yeah. Um, I think their ceiling is much higher than the Raiders. And I think, you know, they're, they're the team that could do something. So they're probably the team we want to spend more time on, in my opinion, you know, just in terms of they're more interesting, but I don't think that 
um, this is a team that's, you know, guaranteed eight or nine wins or anything. I'm going to go on the flip side. I think the Raiders will finish third, and I think the Raiders are closer to the Chargers than they are to the Broncos. I think, you know, the one thing that worries about the one thing with the Raiders that really worries me is defense. I feel like the defensive right. side of the ball the last few years has been a disaster. And obviously you've got Max Crosby, who's one of the better pass rushers in the NFL. Chandler Jones was a letdown last year. I feel like he's not living up to his contract. And then outside of that, it's like, you know, okay, okay. What do we got here? Uh, a bunch of journeymen. But um, I, I just think, Jimmy G, man, like this guy's just a winner at the end of the day, weirdly enough. And and I think this offense is going to be really good. I think, you know, it it does hinge on Josh Jacobs showing up. I think he will play. I mean, he doesn't really have much leverage, unfortunately, at this point. And I don't think, you know, he's going to turn down $10 million, especially seeing, I think all these running backs, seeing the way the, the Lev Bell situation unfolded, obviously he ended up getting paid, but that was at a different time. But also just seeing kind of how his career just was never the same after that. I feel like, you know, none of these guys are really trying to skip a season. So I think Josh Jacobs will play. Um, and this offense, I think, will be really good. I think he's going to have another good year. Devontae Adams, you know, there's kind of been some, you know, rumors or, or just kind of speculation based on what he said that, you know, he kind of wants out. And understandably so. I mean, he kind of went there. Not he kind of. He went there to be with his, you know, best friend from college, Derek Carr. And obviously Derek Carr moved on to the New Orleans Saints. Um, so we'll see. But I think, you know, they got the weapons. Hunter Renfro. I think it's due for a bounce back here. Um, so we'll, I don't know. There's just something about Jimmy G and I think this offense will be solid. And I don't know. I think it's for me more the Broncos. I just don't think are, I think they're going to be in for another rough year, to be honest. I think, you know, I think the injury bug is already starting to bite them. They've already lost Tim Patrick for the season. Jerry Judy's now down for, you know, several weeks, which who's no, you know, I've heard, heard anywhere from two to, you know, it could be six or seven. I mean, who knows how serious that's going to be, but, you know, it's just like that, then it's like, all right, well, Cortland Sutton and, you know, I, I think KJ Hamler's still there, but it's like, it just gets thin all of a sudden and it worries me. And, you know, there's questions with Russ. Um, this defense should be really good, but at the same time, they lost some guys. They lost uh, Draymond Jones to the Seattle Seahawks. Um, they did sign, was Randy, did was Randy Gregory signed this offseason or last, last offseason? Last offseason. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I thought that was this offseason. Um so he's coming back, I guess. Um, but they, you know, obviously traded Bradley Chubb. And, yeah. and he barely played with injury. So it's basically like an addition. Yeah, right? that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, he's going to be there. So we'll see. I, I don't know. I'm I'm just a little worried about Russ. And I think, you know, Sean Payton, you know, that that's the guy you want at the helm. I mean, he's wanted at the highest levels. Um, you know, I think his, you know, some of his stuff he said and, you know, the whole thing with Garrett Wilson was was funny. And oh, yeah, um, obviously the Robert Sala thing um, or it was about. Yeah, was it? Really? About, it was about Robert Sala, right? Yeah. And and hacked it a little bit. Right. That's what it was. It was hack it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like it was just uncalled. Like, yeah. Well, I, I just I just you just don't see NFL coaches starting drama with each other too often. But whatever i guess he's entitled to do that at this point. <laughs> yeah i think i mean i don't know i feel like he said it kind of as as in his excuse or whatever but like it's like uh you know fox sports side of him kind of came out or like the analyst side of him came out right. which i i kind of understand but at the same time it's like you know you've been in the league for a while you're considered to be one of the you know top head coaches in the league like you know you gotta kind of have some respect but it is what it is um but yeah i, I don't know i'm just not super high on this team i, I just like I think, I don't know. I'm just not, I'm trying to find the words. It's been a while since I've done this podcast thing. I'm definitely rusty with the, the old words and the explanations. But um, yeah, I, I just think I, I'm I'm a little worried. I think Russ is going to be a lot better than he was last year. But I think, you know, just seeing some of the injuries already, is Javante Williams going to come back and be, you know, kind of what he was looking to be before? You know, I think the, these guys with the ACL injuries like him, Brees Hall, I think they're going to kind of take – we saw with J.K. Dobbins last year. Like, these guys take a year to kind of get back to full speed. They're not – you know, we're not going to see Brees Hall and Javante the way they were pre-injury. It's just not realistic, unfortunately. Next year, you know, hopefully both those guys are back to 100% being themselves. But, you know, I just don't think we'll see that. We saw with Saquon, too, I believe, um, where that first – I think – was last year his first year back? Was it the year before? Uh, it was the year before. It took him – it right, took him, yeah. and, really took him a year, yeah. Yeah, so um, – I, I don't know. I'm just not super high on this Broncos team. I, they've got the weapons. They've got good defensive pieces. I just don't know. I, I Just a gut feeling, I guess. I don't know. I'm not huge on Russ, and we'll see. Injury history is has not been kind with this team. 
Yeah, no, um, absolutely. So if we just want to do fantasy sleepers, I think do yeah. we do we do AFC South? No. No, we can go back to the AFC South. There's probably some some deep guys in there. So who do you got in there? Yeah, so sorry, I had to do my AFC South one because I am really banging the table for this. I hope you don't steal them in our league or any of our viewers <laughs> um, in our league. Uh, but Calvin Ridley, um, I think is really poised. I, you know, I drafted him in multiple leagues three years ago around this spot when he was sort of projected to have that his breakout season, and he really did. Um, and you know, we've seen a lot of things happen since then, and now he's on a new team. Um, being drafted in a similar position I just really can see him having another huge year um, we just you know we know how dynamic he is as both an athlete as and as a route runner one of the most creative route runners we have in the game you know he'll really do some crazy stuff to get open but he's a stud and so I'm really excited to see him um, play and I'm I'm trying to draft him in every league I can yeah um, I like that pick I mean I think you know Calvin Ridley probably is playing with the best quarterback of his career right now. I mean, you look at Matt Ryan kind of in those later Falcon days, yep. he really wasn't at that, you know, level that I think Trevor's going to be at this year. So really good pick. Um, I got two guys. One is Tank Dell of the Texans. He's been a guy that I've seen. There's this one guy I follow on uh, Instagram he's called the fantasy football counselor or something like that, I think. And he's been banging the table, like you said, for Tank Dell. Um, and I think, you know, you look at those weapons, like I brought up Robert Woods, Nico Collins, like none of those guys are going to be like studs. You know what you're going to get. They're just kind of average NFL receivers at this point in their careers. Um, so Tank tells a guy who I could see, you know, there was, you know, I think, you know, I don't know. I remember seeing something where CJ Stroud and was say, like yep, saying yeah. he wanted him or something. So it seems like, you know, that could be maybe the guy for CJ Stroud that he kind of leans on and, and starts getting the ball to. He's done. He's looked good in preseason. So Tank Dell, a guy that, you know, he's not even being drafted right now. I just did a, a 12 team draft the other day. Um, and, you know, I got him off the waiver wire. I forgot about him, honestly. And then I realized, oh my God, like Tank Dell, he probably got drafted in me. He's not even getting drafted. So he's a guy who, you know, you can draft in the last round of, uh, of your drafts right now. And, you know, he's got that breakout potential. Other guy, this is a pretty deep sleeper. Um, but Evan Hull, former Northwestern running back on the Colts, just with the whole Jonathan Taylor situation going on right now, he's a guy that, you know, you might be looking at stats right now on that team outside of Taylor. You've got Zach Moss, who's I think he broke his wrist or something. So he's out. And then it's between Evan Hull and Deion Jackson. And it's like, you know, watching Evan Hull in college last season, like he's an elite pass catcher. One of the best. He was one of the best in college football last year. And he's got that burst as a rusher. I think he could be, you know, a solid guy that, you know, if he gets the opportunity, he might step up and take it and, you know, I'm not saying this guy's going to be like an RB1 or anything, but, you know, if he could turn out to be a, a RB3 or maybe even a, a back-end RB2, but even as an RB3 kind of flex guy, if he does end up somehow getting into the starting position, um, you know, as a guy you can pick up off the waiver wire that's not going to get drafted, could be a good shout. So Evan Hall, a guy to keep your, your eye on as the Jonathan Taylor situation unfolds. Obviously, if JT is there and playing for the Colts, not a guy you want to roster, but if JT does get traded or – you know, holds out or, or whatever the deal is. Um, Evan Hole's a guy that I would keep a close eye. Yeah, that's a that's a really good one. We've seen guys like you know James Robinson in the past yeah. perform like a top running back. Um, so that's definitely a good you know route to think on if if Taylor gets traded. Um, especially on a bad team where he could be <clears throat> passing, catching a lot of passes, you know, stuff like that. Um, so for the AFC West, I just have one guy. Um, I'm going to go with Greg Dolchich on the Broncos. Oh, actually, I have another. I'll get into him in a second. But good starting hair. With, He's got starting good hair. With, yeah, he does have good hair. <laughs> um, just starting with Dolchich, he, 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 you know, was injured to start the year. I think he started playing maybe week seven-ish, somewhere around the middle of the season. And he actually was able to create some explosive plays for the Broncos last year. So – um, that's, you know, something that, that should be noted. And, you know, Sean Payton has talked about him very glowingly this off season saying, he's you know, someone they want to use as, as the, I forget what's, what's the word, but it's a certain role in their offense for someone who's just, you know, someone the quarterback can always trust and is going to be, you know, try is going to be someone they're going to be trying to force favorable matchups for. Um, and he said, Dolce was going to be that guy for the offense, you know, where we've seen, you know, Darren Sproles be that guy in the past. We've seen Camara, we've seen 
we've seen tight ends like Jimmy Graham, we've seen Michael Thomas, you know, whoever it is kind of be the alpha of the offense. And if, if Peyton's planning on using Dolchich in that role, at least at sometimes with that connection, we saw Russell Wilson and him sort of form last year. I'm, I'm really high on him. Um, especially if you get some, you know, passing out of Russ this year that we didn't, you know, we don't really foresee. Yeah. You have another guy you said, Oh yeah, sorry. Uh, Justin Maybe. Ross on the Chiefs. Uh, that might be yeah. your guy. I I have a feeling that was your guy. No, okay. He's not my guy. Um, uh, just because he's just been getting a lot of training camp hype. I liked him coming out as you know he had an injury um issue, but he's really talented coming out of Clemson. So I could just see him you know getting some uh getting some targets in the surprisingly open Chiefs receiver room. Yeah, that receiver room for the Chiefs is, uh, you know, you got Kadarius Tony, who I'm sure he'll be, you know, out by week two or week three. Yeah. There's, you know, <laughs> slim chance that guy finds his way on the field for more than 10 games next year. But, uh, yeah, like you said, like someone's got to catch the ball besides Kelsey in that offense. And that leads me to one of my other sleepers or one of my sleepers. I guess I haven't said a sleeper yet. Um, Jarek McKinnon. Um, mm -hmm. He's a guy who is going, I think, you know, if you're looking at ESPN rankings in terms of if you're drafting, I think he's in like the hundred something range, but you look at what he did for a good five, six week stretch last year. He was like a top five RB at one point and, you know, in that stretch, um, putting up like 30 a game. Like this is a guy who obviously Pacheco was the guy. You've got Clyde Edward to but Jared McKinnon, like in the two minute drill, like this guy goes in, out and gets five, six catches a game. Like he's a, a, a potential flex guy, like just a good guy to have on your team. And, you know, if, you know, God forbid, a guy like Pacheco goes down for a long time, McKinnon's role only is going to expand. But someone's got to catch the ball in this Chiefs offense outside of Kelsey. I think McKinnon's going to be a guy who, you know, looking at how they used him last year and how successful it was, I think his role is only going to expand. So I like Jarek McKinnon. He's a guy I'm targeting kind of late in, in drafts as a, you know, either my fourth or fifth RB on my roster. And then another guy I like is Jacoby Myers of the Raiders. Um, there's been rumors about Hunter Renfro potentially being traded or, you know, it just seemed like a down year last year. So if that does happen, but even if it doesn't, I think Jacoby Myers is just like, he's just a guy who I see him and Jimmy G just like finding a groove on. And obviously Devontae is the guy in that offense, but Darren well, Waller is gone. So targets are opening up. And I think Jacoby Myers, they paid him good money. Like they're going to get this guy the ball. And he obviously, um, you know, he was, he went on like some, like, he like never scored a touchdown last year. Like he went on, like, what was yeah. it? 12, 13 games or something, or had he never scored one before in his career? I don't know. I just remember there's some long. Yeah, some weird streak like that, yeah. Yeah, so hopefully, maybe he finds the end zone, but if he's allergic to the end zone, I guess maybe he's, he's not a guy. Maybe he's due for him. some He's due for some touchdown regression, or progression, I guess. Progression, yeah. Yeah, so <laughs> fantasy experts on outside the arena, you know, looking at the data. It's all in the data. Kobe Myers is due for <laughs> a 20-touchdown season this year with Jimmy G. So target him. Uh, I think he's a guy who – you know, maybe he works his way up to being a flex or even, you know, a wide receiver too on your team. Jimmy G, you know, we've seen receivers with him succeed. Obviously, um, you know, Debo had a crazy year with Jimmy G. George Kittle um, as a tight end was, was has been pretty good in his career with Jimmy G. So, you know, Jimmy G, um, you know, he's proved he can at least, you know, get the guys the ball. And, uh, you know, especially if Josh Jacobs doesn't, you know, end up playing for this team somehow, which I don't think is going to happen. But then, you know, really they're going to be pass heavy. And Jacoby Meyer is a guy that, you know, I think we'll catch some passes. So he's a guy, 20 touchdown Jacoby. You heard it here first. Uh, he's going to set the lead the NFL in putties. And yeah, you're welcome for uh, winning your fantasy league. In the <laughs> um, yeah. Do you have anything else to the AFC West? Um, just to touch on the Chiefs really quickly. Yeah, we should probably talk about the defending champs. Yeah, I – like I I don't know because you know they they made it work last year with their wide receiver one is you know sort of a combination between Kelsey and you know Valdez Scantling and you know Juju obviously their main target is always going to be Kelsey but you know the true wide receiver one they didn't really have one last year but now it's like who's even anyone who's even starting really besides I guess Marquez Valdez Scantling for the nine games a year he plays. <laughs> So it's going to be interesting. I don't want to doubt Mahomes or Andy Reid, but, you know, someone is probably going to get like nine or, you know, 900 yards that we don't really expect in that Chiefs offense. So I, you know, that could be interesting or maybe, maybe they struggle with that, you know, maybe that could be an issue for them. So um, that's something to look out for. You know, this defense seems to always start out slow and then kind of find its groove as the year goes along. 
Um, obviously you've got Mahomes, so I'm I'm really confident that this team will will stay. You know, again, going into the playoffs this year, I'm confident we will see the Chiefs the same way we we see them right now. Yeah, I mean, this team is just. Uh, I mean, when you have Pat Mahomes and, and Kelsey, and you know, it's like at some point Kelsey's got to slow down, but he hasn't shown any signs of it so far. So it's like I, I don't think Kelsey's just going to fall off a cliff. I think he's still going to be you know the guy he is, but you know, he will slow down at some point when that happens will be, uh, you know, who knows? Maybe never. Maybe he'll he'll be the next – he'll be the Tom Brady of tight ends. Or yeah. I guess a t- Tony Gonzalez was pretty uh, yeah. pretty elite for a while. Um, but, yeah, like you said, like, there's definitely a concern in the wide receiver room. And you look at the Chiefs' weapons in comparison to kind of the, the rest of these AFC weapons, like the Bengals, um, you know, the Dolphins, really, um, you know, maybe even the Browns, like, it's not on par with uh, with the weapons. It, with the, it's not on par with the weapons. It's not on par with these other teams. But they made it work last season. It's just going to be a matter of you know who's the guy this year. And I think that's something they're going to discover. They're relying on a lot of young guys, like we've said. You know, Marquez is there, obviously, but you know, Sky Moore is he going to break out? Is Kadarius Tony can he stay healthy and break out? Is Justin Ross going to be a good guy for them? Um, I feel like there was one other guy I was thinking of that just. I I lost them, but yeah, like they, they've got to find someone to catch. The ball yeah. Because at the end of the day, you can have Pat Mahomes, but like if he has no one to throw to, like it's not going to matter. So I am a little concerned. I think this team, you know, will still be very good and is still the, you know, Super Bowl favorites in uh, the AFC. But, you know, at some point, you do got to get Mahomes like another stud at, at receiver or just another stud weapon because it doesn't feel like he really has that. And, you know, We've seen it with Reek, obviously, and I'm not saying, obviously, you know, you can't shell out, you know, money to everyone. But, you know, I, I do think that they needed they they failed a little bit this offseason and not really replacing Juju, who, you know, Juju's not some superstar, but Juju's a pretty solid receiver. And, you know, I do think they will miss him and, and his production. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. Um. Well, I think that kind of does it for our talk on the AFC. Obviously. Um, you know, a, a very, very stacked conference. You've got elite quarterbacks galore. It's going to be fascinating to see how some of these divisions play out. Next week, we will talk about the NFC, obviously. Uh, very different. Uh, you know, you've really got, I think, you know, the NFC, most people would consider it being between the Eagles and the 49ers. Maybe you throw a team like the Cowboys in there, but, you know, I feel like they're kind of in that next tier with like a Vikings and maybe a, maybe a Giants, but I don't even know. So, uh, you know, it seems like it's a two-team, two-horse race in the NFC. We'll talk about that next week, though. Um, excited to be back, hopefully this time for good. I know, I feel like I've said that on the last, like, four episodes. I've been like, oh, we're coming back. and But now we got Deb here. Uh, happy to have you. Excited for the future. So if you haven't already, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Follow us on all our social medias. All that stuff will be linked down below. And, yeah, stay tuned for a lot more exciting content. And we'll see you all next week on Outside the Arena.